John Boston, Boston Style Racing, back again. This time we've got a uh, 2009 Yamaha R1 cylinder head uh, that we're going to do some porting on. And uh, I've caught a little bit of flack uh, about people wanting to know more about how I do it, not just seeing the work. So I'm going to show you a couple of goodies here. We've got the first one we're going to use is a carbide burr. This takes out material pretty quickly and it roughs out to the shape that you want pretty good. Then I'm going to go down to a cartridge roll which is just basically sandpaper on a mandrel. And uh, that doesn't remove material quite as quickly but uh, it makes it a lot easier to get smooth transitions where you see the burr, the burr is quite small so it, you know, it takes little gouges. It's real easy to get yourself into trouble quickly with the burr where the cartridge roll is a little easier and does a little bit of cleanup work. Then uh, I've got, uh, this is like a sandpaper flap roll. It does a lot smoother job than the cartridge roll does. Uh, it doesn't cover the same amount of area obviously but uh, it smooths it down pretty well. And then we've got what they call a cross buff. This one's been used a little bit. Uh, that's a Dremel product. And those, they don't last very long at all. They, uh, they wear down quickly. But they make it really quite smooth. And uh, the way I go about it is I start and I use these in order as I've just described them. And when I get to the cross buff, uh, I tend to polish the surface down pretty well. And uh, when it's polished, you can see the imperfections. It's real easy to see where it's not smoothly cut. If you have dips or high spots or anything, that makes it real obvious once it's polished. So then you can go back in and fix those up and then polish it down again. But these days we don't leave the surfaces polished. It's been proven uh, time and again that a slightly roughened surface flows better than a polished surface. So when someone says port and polish, we don't really polish anymore. I polish it just so I can see the imperfections and then fix those and then when I send it out to the customer it's going to have a rough surface. So uh, that's kind of the how-to of it and uh, we'll just take a quick look here. How well you can see in there, a little dark I suspect. But uh, the 09 seems to be quite an improvement over the uh, previous models. Uh, I'm not sure I like the way the bike runs so well, but uh, with the cross plane crankshaft and all that, but the cylinder head looks to be a large improvement. Another bit of constructive criticism that I've received many times is uh, I don't own a flow bench. I don't use a flow bench, but I've never failed to make good gains with any motor that I've ever worked on. I had a DR650 Suzuki single cylinder. I made a 49% power increase on that. Turned out to be the most powerful Suzuki DR650 in the entire world. Um, but see, I'm putting some light under there so perhaps you can see. I just haven't, I use an eye and try to use common sense for how what's going to flow better. You can see the, uh, the divider wall here. I'm just going to thin that down. I'm going to knife edge that a little bit. You can see there's casting imperfections. See the lines that run down the side here? I'm going to do away with those. You can see where Yamaha has cut a little spot right at the edge of each of these just so they don't, uh, when their boots is bolted onto here that holds the throttle bodies, they don't hit a solid wall and cause a turbulent flow. But they've cut it rather abruptly. It's a real short, uh, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch little chamfer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and smooth that and blend it into the wall. I don't know if you can see with this amount of light here, but from the way the, uh, the throttle bodies, the air you can tell comes in this way. You see how it has to make this drastic turn to get around in here. You know, you can't see straight from here to there. It's got a, that's going to be a dead spot. There's going to be no air flowing there because it's just not going to happen. All the suction's down here. So I'm just going to blend that out. I'm going to blend all this. See how it, it has this big curve here. I'm just going to straighten that out, smooth it out. 
take a little bit off of the floor, knife edge this, blend this in, get rid of the casting flaws, and just blend it and smooth it all down. And it's going to turn out really well. Another spot that needs a lot of work. You can see how the seat doesn't meet well with the port wall here. They're all like that. All of them are offset. They don't fit the seats very well into the ports. And uh, you can't see them from this angle, but the ones on the exhaust side are the same, if not worse. So that's another spot where uh, improvements can be made. Okay, now you can see the, uh, the chamfered edge I was talking about here that Yamaha does. You can see I've smoothed it out and made it quite a bit more of a gradual progression. And that's about all I do on that part of the intake. I'm just going to match that chamfer to the rest of it and kind of blend it in. Now you can see I'm finished roughing out the uh, intake side of the port here. I've uh, began the knife edging of the center divider um, and then just blended the uh, chamfered edge into the throat roughly. Um, that's all I'm going to do with the uh, carbide burr at this point on this side of it. You can see on the exhaust board I haven't enlarged any of it. As you can see the, uh, the dark edge right here where there's carbon buildup. That's where the gasket doesn't fit. So, you know, if you were to gasket match this you would remove all of that black area. But you need this area to stay intact because it helps to prevent reversion. You have the exhaust gases go back in and mix with the fresh charge. Uh, so that's why that area is larger. I've gasket matched in the past and found that it, it loses you torque. Uh, it's not a good thing. So uh, this one I'm just going to clean it up and that's about it. I'm not going to enlarge any of this. All the magic is going to be done in the uh, in the ports now, in the uh, bowls where the seats meet the bowl and the throat, and then the blending of it all. That's where all of it's going to happen now. Okay, here's where I was talking about. See how the seat doesn't meet the port wall there? There's a little edge. So what I've done here, you can see, I removed just enough of the seat flush that up with the wall. You have to be really careful because you don't want to damage the seat. And also you have to be careful with the carbide burr in general. On the aluminum part, uh, that thing will dig you a hole that you'll never get your way out of. So you have to be very careful with the carbide burr. Okay, now here you can see on the opposite side, remember on the upper side I had to remove some of the seat to get it to match up with the throat. Over on this side, you get the seat recessed from the throat. So I had to remove part of this here to get it to match up with the seat. Some of them are different. Some of them I had to remove hardly anything. Some of them I had to take a, quite a bit of material off. And you've always got to be careful in this particular spot to see the water jacket right there where all the coolant flows through. I'm sure it's too dark to see in but it goes real darn close to getting into the port there. If you cut out too much of this port, you hit that water jacket, you're going to put this thing in the trash and go buy another one. So you got to be really careful in that area. At this point you can see where I, uh, I had taken the cuts from the seat and then now I've just blended those cuts into the rest of the bowl at this point on the intake. And that's just the rough blending. I'm using the cartridge roll at this point. And uh, we're getting there. At this point you can see that I've finished blending it all. I've uh, polished it so I can see the imperfections. And uh, it's pretty much done at this point. Uh, I hate to rough it back up, kind of, because it sure looks sure looks awful cool when it's all smoothed out like that.
Yeah, this one's getting ready to go to the machine shop, and uh, the customer wanted it sandblasted. So we're going to sandblast the outside of it to get the uh, black off of it. So it's just going to be aluminum colored. And uh, the customer also asked that I match this head, make it look just like the work that's done by a, uh, a big name company that I'll fail to mention at this point. Uh, they cost over four times as much money to have done and uh, I think I've outdone their work pretty easily. This thing's looking real nice. Okay, now we've got this back from the machine shop and uh, now that it's cleaned up you can see, see how we used to have a problem with the seats meeting the port wall? See how that's all just one flowing section there? And the nice smooth radius here? That's all cleaned up. And uh, we blasted the uh, combustion chamber just to remove the carbon. Not, uh, we didn't do anything special there. Just cleaned them up a little bit. There's still a little bit of carbon showing here and there. Which isn't going to hurt a thing. Uh, we didn't mill this head, which would have made a completely clean and smooth surface for the gasket. Because the customer is using a thinner base gasket and a thinner head gasket. And uh, we didn't want to run into clearance issues since I don't have the motor right here in front of me to do all the measurements. He also wanted it uh, blasted on the outside to take off all the uh, black paint. You can see it's uh, pretty well cleaned up. Nice silvery aluminum alloy color. And so I'm going to reassemble this one and it's going to be back out to the customer. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have any questions about uh, getting anything ported, I do uh, dirt bikes, single cylinder, four cylinder, sport bikes, you name it, I port it. That's uh, Boston Style Racing, 949-292-6353, or you can always reach me at WFOFZ1 at Hotmail. Thanks for watching. See you soon.